Are you ready? Alright, I'm ready. Got yeah, channel? You remember when Megan was here in 1989? It's me and you and Megan. We'd probably talk at night up in front of the photo bar. I didn't know, me and you didn't know Megan was going to die later. We just knew she was beautiful to be with now. Megan had this quality when she walked around the world. Me and her, we could walk in a place in Colorado, Napoli, Ponticelli. She'd just get up, sing a song, and everybody, not just one or two, but everybody would be amazed at how she could sing and laugh and dance and tell poetry. But she had a fucking monkey on her back. A big-ass monkey that crawled all over you in the middle of the night. Finally ate her up. Megan walked these streets with me and I told her the story of Ponticelli and she had seen the stories of the favelas of San Paolo. Megan had done a lot of traveling in her youth. She'd go to about everywhere somebody would give her a ride. And uh, we were talking about the poor people. Poor people in Ponticelli. Poor people in uh, New York, in Oklahoma. And uh, Megan wrote this. It's called Clenched Fists and Smooth Faces. I saw a massive fist clenched in the sky. I knew those biceps and triceps by heart, but it was transparent. Like the plastic feeder in Boo's cage or a disposable syringe. And inside was a light, bright red of oxygenated blood, but it was thin, almost transparent, watery. Then I woke. When the whip comes down, walk before they make me run. Abby Hoffman is dead, but the poor go on and on. The favelas of San Paulo, the barrios of Mexico City, the ghettos of New York and Napoli. The revolution is not dead, it is gasping for air that you can breathe. It is thirsting for water that is clean enough to drink. It is crying out for hope. It looks for a quick fix in the bus station while waiting for the dinosaur democracy to drop in its tracks. The scientists say maybe it was a comet that finally off the big boys, and they find the intact caucuses deep inside the ice, in the Arctic trunda or inside retreating glaciers, intact, every hair in place, dinner still digesting. What cataclysmic event will stop this lie? What will they do with the poor, the disinherited, the workers in the fields and the factories, the dispensable ones. I went to camp every summer when I was a child. Church camp, Girl Scout camp, family camping in the Rockies, solo camping for mystery and pleasure. And nowadays, I read about camps, prison camps, for instilling a sense of discipline and restructuring priorities in the young offenders. Relocation camps around the world for those whose homes have been coveted and co-opted by the mighty for their mighty plans of a world with no poor people. All would be rich, just that the disgusting poor, the unattractive wretched ones of calluses and open mouths and open hands and open wounds would no longer be around. The makers and shakers with smooth motherfucking hands.